How are you? Good, thank you. What about you? Ooh, it's a very strange day today with a lot of communication, message, everything, you know. Crazy day, crazy day. Uh, yes, I <laughs> yes, I think also your life is a little bit busy, I think. Yeah, Spe that's true. Especially also because you work for... Uh, uh, your activities all around the world, let's say. Also different kind of... Uh, uh, time in the world, you know, exactly. can, you, yes. can you introduce yourself and uh, what you do now in uh, like activity, your activity? Okay, I feel myself like a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as many of you know, my name is Kati, the original name Katerina. So I'm a PhD researcher and I do research in migration. A part of that, I'm a content creator and now, for now, I work with a very um, intelligent, famous, and extremely smart people, brothers mm -hmm. Lieberman that live in uh, Silicon Valley. And I mean, they, they live at the moment at LA, but I feel privileged to work for them. And all my activities are uh, based or certain, like around digital creation. It's cool. That's cool. I think it's very, what I can say, innovative and something that uh, yeah, so, something new and you need also to be uh, always updated uh, of the evolution of this kind of content and uh, technology. That's true, but I really love the idea of imagined community that basically um, it doesn't matter where you are, where you're based, but you can connect to everyone in the world and you can mm -hmm. be anywhere. So like, Let's imagine that physically you can be at one place, but um, like virtually or like your mind can be everywhere. So oh. and you can just build your community within your values without being attached to a physical place. Hmm. Uh, do you think that this is a really a good uh, uh, direction that uh, that we have uh, in front of us for our future is a there is a big uh, opportunity of development of this area? Um, yes, it's actually very important. But first of all, I see it from nationalistic po point of view because my research on migration and like every day, let's say, I think about um, like what what is the focus of my research and um, mm -hmm. how it's changing within the day. And then... Um, we can put, let's say, two global concepts, is globalization itself and deglobalization. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's a good way to reduce nationalism all over the world because um, when we can connect to anyone, we can actually create our own community. Mm -hmm. And then uh, nobody feels uh, like abandoned or mm -hmm. lost. Because sometimes people, especially migrants who move to another city or another country, they feel completely lost because they don't have friends or they don't have their like network community. And then this is amazing way and prosperity for the future because you can connect to anyone, you can do anything. So, and all you need just basic, basic technologies, which is now a smartphone or like laptop, let's say. Mm-hmm. It's very, very interesting. Uh, this word deglobalization, that it, what means uh, exactly? Because very, I'm very curious in this. Do, do you mean deglobalization? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, deglobalization, basically, for example, what's happened recently with coronavirus that um, we all thought that we are so globalized and mm -hmm. that everything is set up amazingly because we achieved this, um, let's say, milestone in the history when people can live anywhere, they can move anywhere, they can establish business anywhere. So basically, 
it's for freedoms of European Union, but, I mean, explaining ge geograf geographically, but um, when coronavirus started, we all seen the real picture that countries started to close and they didn't want to help each other. So mm -hmm. they just uh, isolated, which is like in a way showing um, deglobalization. And the question is whether globalization existed at all or it was just illusional in a way. So, and if it was um, like real um, or let's say imagined one, what about people's values? I mean, every community at perfect sense it should be established within like people's values but it turns out that people had the idea or the image or dream how it's supposed to be but they didn't want fully contribute their values mm -hmm. and um let's say they were receiving but they were not giving at the end mm -hmm. so this is the concept of globalization i think interesting very interesting there is a big uh, evolution now what you think about this uh, social interaction uh, in the way for the, the evolution also ab about these communities, how the people can be, let's say, together, you know, through this uh, big uh, fast change about the world. Is the technology can help this or there is also other tools, what you think, to let mm. the people to be you know, more together in one community? Do you mean for this particular situation of coronavirus? Yes, from now, for example, there is a this big change in, in the world. Uh, for sure, there is a one evolution about the, how the people interact each other in one community. Because we are s s more separated now. And of course, technology can, can help in some way, but can be also other ways. What do you think? In the, can, there can be that uh, can, we can be together also in another way or the technology is only the unique solution of course it's not the only solution but it's a very broad like question um mm -hmm. technologies like help a lot and we can see so many uh, like startups finally grew up into something like real for example clubhouse and people already start to talk what is mm -hmm. going to be the fail of the clubhouse when everything's going to be open because these particular applications, tools, they started to, to work when people didn't have not had like another way. Mm -hmm. So, but if we think about it deeply, there was always a way, but there, like there, we can find some barriers established by governments, policies mm -hmm. that prevented people to see each other. So, and like looking at this concept we we can we can also develop um different like not theories but concepts how it could be and how what kind of like approaches we could apply for coronavirus regulation and so on yes. so either autocracy or uh, liberty or mixed like both for example i really like the the idea of uh, sweden it was at the beginning, uh, it was the amazing idea at the beginning, but then it, it was spoiled because people didn't take responsibilities. So they basically said, liberty is yours. So mm -hmm. if you want to be free, you're free and you, you're willing to do whatever you do. But just remember that freedom can kill you. Mm -hmm. So like Swedish government basically gave responsibility to people decide if they want to, <laughs> to die or they want to have fun and then um i think the whole like concept failed because mm -hmm. people were irresponsible so it became kind of an like utopian but mm -hmm. this and other examples showed that there 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 were like um communication tools it's very but interesting perhaps if we talk about technology as the safest one that's for sure in this situation that's for sure means that you and can letters. see <laughs> that, and read the that, letters <laughs> yes no because i start to think you know is if in the past was some other solution you know that uh, we can 
led to reemerge again because you know when when the people for example uh, is uh to put to the to the stream you know the, the the in the period of the romans empire you know was in, in rome was the catacombs if you remember no was this yeah, yeah. Uh, under, underground tunnel where the christian can meet each other you know because was mm-hmm. not the people was not able to, of course to meet each other no it was okay to put to the stream you know the only creativity can give us uh, uh, other solution okay and of course now technology is very good but of course technology is also under control in some way is um is not i think it is not the unique one we need to be inspired to find out also other solution for the future for sure because uh, probably okay the future world uh, it can be never can be the same of i think in some way this uh, experience change change inside us everybody can is a change in some way you know that means that we need to invent something different maybe you know, who knows? I'm very curious to explore the future now. That, uh, <laughs> yes, because, uh, you know, <clears throat> challenge give us the opportunity to, you know, to invent something new, you know, is uh, mm-hmm. this obstacle. And, uh, yes. And uh, how was this, uh, let's say, uh, the story that bring you in this situation? Now, you, you, when you... You was a child, you had some dreams, some passion, because this is a series of interviews is about passion. Uh, mm-hmm. The passion that when uh, you was a child, you know, can, can you tell us the evolution about you, you know, in, uh, mm-hmm. in your decision making uh, during your journey of life until now? Well, until the certain moment, I felt actually that passion is the right word for it, but to be honest, when I started to explore philosophy itself, I realized that passion from Latin actually means um, suffering, mm-hmm. like endure. Yes. Or... So, and this is like very interesting because different like philosophers can see passion differently. Like um, philosophers of Romanticism, they believe that it's actually about liberty because um, because like passion sets you free. But such philosophers, for example, like Kant, they mm-hmm. say that this is the disease of the soul. So, mm-hmm. and the other like rational philosophers, they actually like think that it's blur your concept of reality. Mm-hmm. So at least we have three different um, concepts about passion. And after all, knowing that I actually stopped loving this world, <laughs> this, this word. Uh, when it applies for the things that I love to do. So I think the right word for my activities, it would be love. So mm-hmm. in a way, because um, I think when I was 16 years old, I understood one thing that um, I do think, I only do things that I love mm-hmm. or I love the things that, that I do. So there is no other way around. And... It took me, of course, like years, even if it sounds a joke, because it's all evolutionary, because we're still uh, like growing within the years and so on. Uh, For me, it took years to realize that because being a child, I've been experimenting a lot with Mm -hmm. uh, things I like, with the things I didn't like. And I was actually happy to have um, and still having parents who understand that um, entrepreneurial soul let's say uh Mm -hmm. takes many trials so you never know what's gonna be your greatest love if you never tried something and you never understood what's like what is the the good thing for you and what is a bad thing for you Mm -hmm. so and when i was a child i had many passions i was painting i was um very curious about animals Insects mm-hmm. some, sometimes a bit too much because I really love torturing like oh. animals. Yeah, not not animals, but basically like insects, mm-hmm. uh, because I really love to um, uh, observe this aunt's houses. 
and mm-hmm. sometimes to create extra challenge for them, like putting the bee inside the house and to see what they're going to do, how they're going to survive. <laughs> wow. yeah, you was curious, you know, to test the extreme. Yeah. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and then when, when I saw, for example, that they're doing great, I would give them some food. And it was that, the other interesting thing to see how they're working to get that big piece of something that I gave to them and they were like mm-hmm. trying to hide it somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, but um, my my final, let's say, like love started to form when I turned like seven, seven-ish. Um, it, it was related to the parent situation because they were working a lot and most of the time I stayed alone at home. And it's pretty no- normal in Russia just to leave a child at home and then to explain what he or she can do in the house and what he or she can't do. So, and for me, because I was extremely bored, I was reading a lot and I actually learned myself how, how to read books. Mm-hmm. So, and my all activities were around books. And then when I went for like the school, my teacher found out that I'm an amazing writer. So, mm-hmm. and she never told me that, um, maybe only at the end, like at the graduation party, but I started to notice uh, that she was creating some extra tasks for me. She was setting me up for like, let's say, regional competitions and so on. And then I saw that I always had a kind of privilege when it turned out to be a homework and I have not done it. And she would say, oh, she has like another task to do. So don't worry about her. And then I realized that it's actually something that I should follow. Um, because, um, you know, you can't, I mean, you can try actually to say no to something that belongs to you. But in most of the cases, it takes time and effort to accept your own talent Mm -hmm. and develop it to that stage of life where you're going to truly love it, or Mm -hmm. better say, when you do not hate it. And this is where we meet like both concepts of love and passion because passion is a suffering, but love is love. So if you do not hate something that you do, then it's passion. But if it's like something that you truly love, even um, if it's, how to say it, sometimes makes you tired, it's still like love. And um, I realize that like this is my destiny perhaps but it took me years to accept that and uh, <clears throat> uh, you was able to write some books or some uh, um, material or you work it only for uh, some only for clients uh, or like a ghost writer or something like this which kind of text uh, you was able to write you Mm-hmm. So until now, like my greatest work, let's say, um, I invest lots of time in writing my own dissertation, which is like mm-hmm. scientific work. And mm-hmm. I know for sure that um, the coverage of people going to be greater than I would write it for someone. Because mm-hmm. I know that what I'm doing now is going to set up directly for the future. So I know that the time that they invest in present time mm-hmm. is going to be seen in the future. It's like sending the letter to the future. Exactly. Totally so agree. I see it as my little mission at the moment because I aim at education of people. And uh, for me, um, this is a kind of not charity, but giving back to the nature because I was giving the talent. And then I feel that I reach the stage when I actually can give back something to the nature as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe not to the nature, but to the people from the future. So by reading my works or by, by reading my things, they can actually, uh, let's say, become a little bit better. So, but... No, congratulations. I can see that uh, you were very in love with for, about writing. I can see. Yes, that's true. But I also do like ghost writing, also write like contents and so on, mm-hmm. which is also interesting experience because um, 
I think in this case, you're not fully a writer, but you're also a psychologist because you're trying to get inside mm -hmm. a head of your client. And yes. then you try to do something that they would do, but you would do it even better than they would do. It's like to be one actor that you need to be another person and to be uh, in the best way, you know, the, to act uh, in the, the best way to be, uh, to represent exactly the message that you want to transmit. It's, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a dub, double energy because really you need to enter in this, uh, in his mind and after, you know, to transform, you know, this, uh, you know, the words, uh, to create the words, so everything is cool. Um, and uh, today, do you write every day something also for yourself or, or to be inspired or something also today? I try, um, like, but the, re the recent thing that I started, um, it's called the House of Dolls. The, mm -hmm. or the dollhouse so it's basically about how one woman grows up mm -hmm. so and basically when she has to she has to abandon her house of dolls let's say mm -hmm. it's about more like mm, mental like changing of mentality something mm -hmm. like that so something that you can't touch but you can see it in behavior, you can see it in many other things. Because so, um, for me, it was a kind of like blurred and uh, only now I started to feel that I'm not like a girl anymore, but I'm a woman because it's like more responsibilities and so on. But I still try to, you know, cherish my inner child. So which is like sometimes it's, re it's really hard and I had to say uh, goodbye to many things mm -hmm. and like by changing myself. That's why I'm writing about the dollhouse, um, that it's something that, you know, within the time women stopped loving, that, loving it. Yeah. And for sure can be useful for others to read. Yes, to grow for sure. Yes. Congratulations again. About uh, your, do you have some um, uh, technique sauce? Do, are you able to to enjoy the moment, to be on the now? You know, do you have some uh, daily routine that permit to you to to feel the existence and to be on the now and to yes, and to enjoy life, and to be grateful? Do you have some some daily routine for this? Mm, like yes but it's it's changing all the time mm -hmm. and this is like my biggest down let's say by the way nina said hi to us hello everyone who's listening yes so yes. for joining <laughs> yes so good memories everything it, it's different i i blame myself a lot uh, a lot for not having discipline because sometimes i just wake up and when I feel like doing one thing, I do that thing. And then at the end of the day, I get disappointed that I did not do another thing, which is like, what? Like conflict of interest, let's say. So, but when I feel fine with myself, most of the time, these things are kind of natural. And I rely on my intuition to guide me through the day, to guide me through the routine. But one thing for sure that I do every day, I study, not mm -hmm. study way like persistently studying and studying like nerdy studying, but I learn something new like every day. So little by little, I'm catching up with, um, let's say, I think I, I actually finished the part with catching up with, uh, with the past, but now I'm trying to catch up with the future, mm -hmm. which is like also learning the things. Do you have some specific area where uh, you like in this period to study or, uh, or some topic that you enjoy more in this period? Um, it's, it's always different now. I try to invest lots of time into computer science and mm -hmm. uh, big data. 
machine learning and so on because I never done that and I feel that I have a gap there. Um, the same, but at the same time, um, I let's say take some more new like some new topics as well for example i started to see new perspectives on philosophy itself like mm -hmm. taking the etiquette or how's the ethics ethics yes mm -hmm. so what else um but basically now i think only technical part because it's about future hmm. it's very interesting it's not it's not a typical you know it's a you are, let's say, special in this because it's not common to see person to be focused in this kind of topic. Very complicated, I think. Also, okay, depending of the uh, of the mind of the person. Maybe for you it's more easy. But if I try to read something like this, I think now it uh, can be a challenge for sure for me. <laughs> but yes, in, very interesting. And you, you suggest this uh, this topic is a. Is that attractive? Yes, it's something uh, that is a very interesting to know today. Yes, for the thing. I I think yes. Um, basically, we are machines ourselves in a way, and it was proved by like it was proved uh, scientifically. Mm -hmm. So and I like how I decided actually to study this topic. Um, firstly, I took a course on neurology. And mm -hmm. I tried to see how like the like brain machine works, let's say. And it was very interesting for me because it seems so logical and it felt so amazing actually to understand how you do decision making, how like you feel about something and why do you feel that. And it helped me a lot to, um, uh, let's say, find the peace and balance with myself. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to also study computers and, and stuff because I think it's uh, in a way helping me to expand the knowledge about mm -hmm. our own brain. And at the same time, it's something challenging. Mm -hmm. But this environment helps me a lot because um, when we were like out and when we we were allowed to go out, let's say, I felt that I have some pressure, like some social pressure, because mm -hmm. at some point of my life, I started to, to be a little bit more introverted and I felt um, bad about like noises, about over communication with people. And when they announced lockdown, it was actually amazing for me. Of course, like after a few months, I started to suffer as well. But then um, it gives me the, the room for mm -hmm. the activity is that I would not do if everything like uh, were open, let's say, opened. Um, we talk about, we spoke about uh, the, this um, computer and, and uh, computer learning of this topic about, uh, let's say, software also probably. What do you think about the the theory that uh, we live in one uh, virtual reality. What do you think about this topic? One virtual reality? Yes, the, the life is a virtual reality. What do you think about this topic? You know that also for Elon Musk, he told that probably statistically is more, <laughs> there is more probability that you live in one virtual reality than uh, you know, is a, in one of, let's say, reality that we how we think now, you know, something like this. But do you have some opinion about this topic? The, our reality is something more, uh, let's say, computer game, like a computer game. What do you think? I, I respect Elon Musk a lot, but to be honest, I think he has nothing to do with philosophy. And sometimes he really gives this, like, comments that, you know, if we were, we had the rating based on the things that you say and the action that you actually do, uh, knowing that you're responsible for the mass of people. And then it would be the wealth redistribution, let's say. I don't play Robin Hood, but, you know, I just feel sometimes it would be, it, it would be an amazing system because now what I see that many people speculate and they do things that they actually don't, don't, don't even know anything about it. So, and... 
Yes, Elon Musk is great. He has amazing company that basically um, like creates our future. And I respect him a lot, but I don't think that we live in one virtual reality. Um, even considering the fact that uh, there are so many theories about it. And uh, since I'm a philosophy <laughs> lover, let's say, mm -hmm. I usually love to explore the wisdom of other people mm -hmm. and to have the variety of it. And for example, if you consider the reality, you consider space and time, it's already two different systems. Mm -hmm. So you can think about time like a reality or you can, could think about space as reality. You could also merge both of them and it could be like reality. Mm -hmm. um, but I totally disagree that the whole life is virtual reality. And, so. uh, and a dream, you know, there is some, uh, because you really like philosophy, you know, and uh, if you go back in time, for example, with uh, the Zen philosophy or, you mm -hmm. know, Lao Tzu, you know, they, they, they or oh, Buddha, okay, they describe reality like a dream, no? Something like a dream. Means that uh, is another, is that from the philosophical uh, perspective, not technological, let's say, mm -hmm. but philosophical. What do you think? Everything is a dream. We are the dream of the butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to, what do you think? The real, uh, is it real? Or is only something uh, weird, <laughs> something strange? What do you think? I think that, okay, philosophy is good for seeing things, but when it's applied to life, I actually believe in religion and like in the God creation. So perhaps this world, like the, the dream world that you have just described would be paradise for technologies because, you know, if everybody could see the world as a computer game or let's say something like a uh, virtual reality, mm -hmm. then it would be just a uh, pro programmer paradise or like computer guys paradise. But I still believe that there is something that makes like, makes us different from artificial intelligence itself and uh, this is a very like narrow specific topic that can be explained only by the belief in god and belief in religion itself and like because we all have souls and this this is one of the things that you can't explain mm -hmm. so and i think that um if we talk about dream um you mean dream when you sleep right you know, there is different level of uh, awareness, no? You know, there is the awareness of the body, but also there is the awareness of uh, information, no? It's like when you, when you look on the, on in your mirror, no? You can mm -hmm. feel that you move your hand, you know, you watch yourself and you are aware that you move your hand. But the other way is uh, to be aware who is in front of the mirror. It's different kind of awareness, no? It's a... Uh, the, the concept, the idea, who is in front of you, and the the awareness that you are something like a, you are inside a body, no? You are a physical body, but who no, is? It's all fairy tales. It's all physics, you know. The reflection. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's just the light and reflection. That's it. <laughs> this is a new effect. And everything is what you think is uh, there is a. A big project behind There's somebody because you, you you spoke about religion, no God. There is a big project of God that uh, that give us this existence. What do you think? No, it's about unconditional love. I believe that mm. we are all in love. So and like it's a celebration of life. Let's say what we have now, we celebrate. So, and we celebrate the love to the God that he gives us, but God in many religion, uh, religious, uh, religions, like different one. For example, if we talk about, um, let's say, Orthodox or Christianity, the God is a kind of the creature that, um, let's say, he loves and he respects people and so on. For example, Jewish God is a little bit like sarcastic and in a way cruel <laughs> because 
because he like they say that uh, you suffer because God loves you. That means that the more he loves you, the more you mm -hmm. suffer, <laughs> which, which is also interesting that basically you can find the progress in like in suffering. Wow. But it's like the Buddhism, no? that uh, the, one of the main rules of the Buddhism or the idea of the Buddhism that life is suffering. And uh, yeah, it means that, yeah, but we need to enjoy, you know, that uh, finding our mission here, finding our reason why on your journey, we need to enjoy, you know, every day also to have experience in what's happened. Yeah. Yes, absolutely true. Uh, <laughs> Very deep, very deep conversation. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, let's go in the direction of the future. No, is um, do you have some vision for you and for the world? Do you have some something that you feel that uh, you want to realize that uh, exactly to to manifest uh, your existence here, to to doing something, some goal that you have or some direction. Mm, it's it's an interesting question. So I think that it's not going to be something that going to like uh it's not something that going to happen that going to kill us let's say but I think the projection of the future and the direction for people has become more like uh, not more but become kinder and more mm -hmm. respectful towards each other and the nature itself. Mm -hmm. Because I truly believe that this, let's say, exercise or um, a test of coronavirus was given for something that people would, would think about their actions, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's again about religion. When it was the floating, the God promised that he's not going to create the second one. But he didn't say that he's not going to create something else, you know? Ah, this is the yeah. same plasma of religion. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Don't forget me. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> and, and the sign, I love you, you know? <laughs> yes. I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in some way, yes. Yeah, give, God give us the another task to prove that uh, we can love each other you know we can help each other we can love each other we can build uh, our better future only through love for sure you know yeah because that... because uh, really uh, like i told you before that at the beginning of this situation um we saw the reaction of the country uh the ego of the country you know each country want to save himself you know and they want to have uh, his, you know, um, quantity of masks is only for me or something like this. That, uh, and is uh, the is the ego of the country, you know, that come out like the ego of the uh, of the people, you know, that. But we can uh, evolve only through love, and to be mm -hmm. feel that you are united and we can help each other, you know, for the future, for the better future. Means yes, I totally agree with you. Love is the, always the answer. Yes, Gulara just said it's a test, but that's true, absolutely. Yeah. But exactly. what I think that many people still won't get the lesson, and they're gonna pay for it. That's mm. it. Because what's gonna happen when they're gonna open everything? Everybody gonna get back to their life. So I don't think that many things gonna get changed. So mm. and it's gonna ju just you know coming back to the lifestyle, what they had, um, the majority of people will be still the same, but the minority, uh, like some minorities, let's say, mm -hmm. all over the world, not in a way like nationalistic minorities, they will still gain something new and they, like, they will reinvent, reinvent themselves mm -hmm. in a way and they, they change. And you know, like big changes happening from small, tiny little pieces, which is already good. Exactly. So, what did I mean? Start small, like think big. <laughs> yes, yes. Little steps in the direction of, uh, you know, a big vision. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's true. 
uh, last question, that, because time is very fast. Um, one advice for the next generation, you know, from your experience that uh, if you remember you when you was young, imagine that somebody uh, with more experience give you some advice and uh, what you appreciate to receive, which kind of message that uh, you want to send to this person that are now is young, but thinking about uh, life in maybe in a different way, more uh, easy way maybe. And uh, which advice you can uh, deliver this person, the new generation? I truly believe that everybody has its own way. And no matter mm -hmm. what kind of, let's say, advice you're going to give, nobody going to mm -hmm. follow because I have not followed. So my parents told me many times, my teacher of chess told me every time, she told me like, you know, you need to learn from mistake of your like other players. And I said like, why do I need to learn from others if I can make my own mistakes? So, <laughs> so I, I, you want to, to make a lot of mistakes to understand better. Yeah, I, I know it's stupid, but it was actually... No, like uh, philosophy that I created for myself and yes I did like lots of mistakes and to be honest I'm so happy with them I mean they hurt me so many times but uh, I'm still alive and I'm so happy about it so I would say maybe it would be the one and only do, do not be afraid to make mistakes mm -hmm. so yeah that's the only legit question that I could give not not question but uh, tip let's say means do a lot of mistakes don't be afraid uh, uh, fear is the unique thing that you need to be afraid in order to fear in order to make mistake yes. yeah that's true even if can... death yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay the, the, when aristotle uh, died uh, Plat I think it was Plato, 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 or Plato staying and he was thinking about that's actually good that it happens because he just proved that he is immortal. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So, yeah, also Socrates uh, was, uh, let's say, in good relation with, uh, uh, with the dead because. Uh, when so one friend, I think was the story of one friend, you know, when uh, Socrates was uh, was there, you not know, close to the, his death, you know, but, uh, that he need to suicide himself with the poison. And um, the friend asked, why you are not so afraid about the death? You know? And Socrates said, come on, it's another experience that I need to know. And uh, is a... Uh, something that uh yeah i need to have also this experience it means that this is a why i i my smile until the last, last moment yes yeah maybe it was socrat i don't remember uh was it yes, Soc socrates so socrates yes socrates yeah. no but uh i think um after aristotle i think yeah maybe maybe it's it was socrates who who said to to him or not to him but said it but i'm not sure about it so. yes Let's let's learn a lot from uh, this uh, wisdom of the past that we need a lot to to rediscover, you know. Yes. And without waiting that some teacher come to you and push you to learn, you know, it's important that this uh, um, desire to know, you know, the, the the wisdom because philosophy means the f philosophy means the love of wisdom, you know, this. Uh, that uh, embrace us, you know, and uh, let's to to shine, uh, you know, our higher self. Okay, thank you so much, Kathy. It was a good, thank good conversation. Thank you. Uh, and, and thanks. And... Watch till the end. I hope you had fun with us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> See you soon, eh? In town. See you soon. Yeah, Ciao. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye.